Hi, and welcome to another episode of Vaadin Tips. This week, we're going to talk about application state management. So when your app starts to grow from just being a view or a couple of views, you're probably going to start running into a problem where you want to share some of that application state between components. Now, there are different ways you could do that by passing events and uh, passing in properties from a top level component, for instance. But today, we're going to look at how we can use MobX to have a application wide state so that every view and every component can just be a reflection of that one central state. So we only have one source of truth and everything is just a reflection of that. And that is a very nice way of making sure that everything that the user sees in our application always stays in sync. So let's jump into the application and let's see how we can do this. All right, so here I have an application built with Vaadin Fusion 18. So it's a lit element project. Uh, everything that we're gonna look at here will work in a plain lit element project if you're using that. So what I've built as a base here is a simple to-do application. So we can add add some tasks and, and check them off like this. And those are saved, persisted on, on the server so we can refresh the application and, and keep our, our state there. Now, now, if we take a look at the implementation, you can see that we have a lit element with an internal property for the to-dos array. And we have a, first of all, a form with a text field and a button for creating new uh, or adding new tasks. And that's using the Vaadin binder. We then map over all the to-dos and create just a div with a checkbox and the task. When the component gets attached to the DOM, we go to the server endpoint and fetch all the to-dos and assign them to our to-dos array. And when we add a new task, what we do is we use the binder and submit to the save to-do method here. When we save a to-do, what we do is we uh, save it on the backend through this endpoint and then if it was a new to-do, that, that is, we didn't have an ID from before, we will append this to our to-dos array. And if it was an existing to-do, we'll instead find that uh, previous to-do with the same ID and replace uh, the updated to-do. All right, so that's the application that we have so far. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna have a progress bar and a progress indicator up here showing how far along I am on my task list. Now the problem of that is that this header is in the main view, so it's not in the same component as the state that I want to reflect. So that leaves me with a problem. Where do I where do I put the state so that two components can reflect the same state and kind of not lead to a situation where my task leads uh, where my task list, for instance, needs to uh, notify the header to update itself. Rather, everything should just automatically reflect that state. So that's where MobX comes in. We're going to use MobX as a state management solution to have a application state that will then hook onto both in the view and in the header. Now, to use MobX, we need to install it first of all. Normally, uh, in a lit element project or in a normal button project, you'd be able to just do an npm install or pnpm if uh, that's what you're using. The current version of Vaadin 18 has a bug in it that requires you to use a specific version of pnpm with a specific uh, parameter for that to work. So, uh, what I've done is used version uh, 4.5 of pnpm uh, with the hoist option on to install MobX and Adobe's lit MobX. I'll add this to the show notes so you can copy it from there if you're in a Vaadin Fusion project. If you're in a lit project, you can just do npm install like normal. Anyway, the dependencies we need are MobX uh, for the actual state management library, and then Adobe's lit MobX helper for hooking our lit elements into the state management. So I've already gone ahead and installed those ahead of time, so we can save a little bit of time. And what I want to do then 
is go through this view first of all and move all the state management out of this component and into a central uh, store. So for us to be able to do that, first of all, we need to create a store. So in my front end folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it store.ts. In this file, I'm going to create a new MobX store, which is just a class. We can call it store. And then I'm going to export an instance of that, which will be what we share among all the different views and components. So export a constant called store, and that will be instantiated to a new store instance like that. Now, in order to turn this plain class into a MobX uh, store, we need to turn it into an observable. So the way we do that is by creating a constructor and calling make auto observable. Auto uh, observable and pass in the class itself. Now, for some reason, my VS code isn't finding the import. So we need to do that the old fashioned way. So we'll import make auto observable from from the MobX module like that. And what this means is that any properties that we have on the store will be automatically observed for changes. And whoever is listening uh, or kind of using those properties will get notified when they change. So very similar to properties in lit element, but decoupled from the actual component. So let's move the store here to the side in our editor, close the sidebar and just start going through the component here and moving everything over to the store. The end goal here is that we want to just replicate the same functionality, but move the state out of the view and into a central store. So first of all, I will move over the to do's. This will no longer be a private uh, state because we want to be able to access it from different places. We need the import here. And with that taken care of, we can go ahead and delete that. All right. And with that, we can now see that we have some parts of the code that's failing. So we don't have a to do's uh, array on this anymore. Rather, it's on store. So we need to import the store and instead map over the to do's in the store. Okay. Now the second part of our state management is when we attach uh, this view to the to the DOM, we're going to the endpoint to asynchronously fetch all the to do's. Now, we want to do this in the store itself. So after we've created the store, we want to go to the server and initialize our store. So I'm going to create a new method call this dot in it like this, then I'm going to declare it. And in here, we essentially want to do the same thing. Now, of course, this needs to be an async method for the await keyword to work. And our endpoint isn't defined. So we need to go ahead and uh, move over our import here. So we'll move that over here. And the path fix like that. Okay, so we have our endpoint and let's go ahead and delete this and then take a look at what we have here. Now, we're, when we're dealing with updating a MobX store from outside the store or through asynchronous code, we need to go through actions. Actions are methods that we use to modify the state and that's a way for MobX to keep track of uh, different pieces of code changing that state. So instead of assigning the to do's array directly from here, we're going to create an action implicitly. So make auto observable will turn any method that we have here into an action. So we can create a new uh, set to do's method like this. We can, uh, of course, this should be an instance method like this, and we declare it. We'll call the argument to do's. And then we here in this action will then do the assignment. So this dot to do's 
is equal to the to-dos that we got passed in. So what this means is that now when we go to the server, we fetch the to-dos, we await the answer, and only de uh, then do we call set to-dos, which will update the state. All right, so that looks good. That, let's continue on our task here. Uh, so here we can see that we have essentially uh, two methods here that are specific to this component. So adding a new task, we're dealing with the binder, which is a part of this component. And likewise, the update status is something that's uh, hooked up to the checkbox here. So those are uh, specific to the component, whereas these three ladder methods here are managing the state. So we can move those over to our to our store like this. And then we'll need to go and fix the remaining piece of uh, code that aren't compiling. So again, uh, we've now moved the save to do method over to the store. So we need to submit it there. Now there's a small problem here. So if we just pass in the me method reference like this, the context for for executing this method would be wrong. So when we get uh, over here and call this dot add to do that this here would actually refer to the task list view, which is not what we want here. So we actually need to rebind this to be in the right context. So we'll pass in the store so that that works. And that's hopefully something we can improve in the API in the future, have a easier way of accessing the uh, binder submission. All right, and then finally here uh, in the update, we can call store.save to do. Here we're not path passing a method reference, so this will get run with the correct this uh, on the store. All right, so let's go ahead and save these. And what we can see now is we're not seeing any compilation errors. Uh, we're also not seeing our uh, tasks here, which is what we would expect. But if I make a change to my let element template, all of a sudden they show up. So what this tells us is that our store actually does work, but our let element isn't actually aware of those uh, changes that are happening in the store. As you remember, our init here is asynchronous. So when let initially rendered, these tasks weren't there. And when we actually set them, it wasn't uh, listening for the changes, and that's why they're not visible here. So in order to fix that, what we want to do is use that Adobe uh, MobX lit element instead of just plain lit element. So we no longer need uh, the lit element import, but instead we want to import this MobX lit element. And again, my VS code is misbehaving, so I need to do this by hand mob x lit element uh, from and this needs to come from Adobe lit mob x like that okay so no other changes now you see that this actually does work we can add the third one you can see that everything updates we can refresh so we've been able to kind of recreate everything that we had before uh, with the difference that we've now changed or we've actually moved over the state from being local to the view to being an application state. All right, and now that we've been able to move the state over, we're able to do what we set out to do initially. So we want to add a progress indicator, a progress bar up here, showing how far along we are with our tasks. So now we can go into main view and again, uh, extend from MobX let element instead of just plain let element which gives us, uh, again, access to the store. I'm going to import a new component. Let me just make that a little bit smaller. So I'm going to import the Vaadin progress bar component that we can use for visualizing uh, the status. And then where we want to put this is up here in the header, which is the header slot here in our uh, Vaadin app layout. So for that, I'm going to create a div with a class status. I've already pre-baked some CSS here to center this and give it a width and all of that stuff. 
And in here, I want to essentially have three things. I want to have the count of completed tasks, the total count of tasks, and then a visual progress bar indicator showing the progress. So for those, we're going to go into the store and add a couple of computed properties. So computed properties in MobX are pretty nifty. So we can define getters for values that we can calculate based on other parts of the state. And they're evaluated lazily. So if we don't call them from anywhere, they'll never get evaluated. And they also uh, remember or kind of cache the values that they've had. So if we uh, keep uh, reading it several times over, but nothing in the state has changed, we're not going to keep recomputing those values. So we're going to create uh, three getters here for computed values. First one will be the completed to do's count. And here we're going to return this dot to do's dot filter. So we're going to filter out all the to do's where uh, all the to do's where the to do is done. And then we're going to check the length of that. Let's make that a little bit easier to read. All right. Second, we'll have the uh, total to do's count like this. And this one is easy. Uh, this dot to do's dot length. And finally, we'll have a calculation of the progress. So essentially just dividing those two by each other. So get progress which will return this dot completed to do's count divided by this dot total to do's count like that. All right. Now that we have those, we can go ahead uh, into our status div here. First of all, we'll wrap uh, the numeric values in one div. So first we'll take our store, import it, get the completed to do's count put a slash between, then we'll, again, use the store and the total to do's count like that. And then finally, we'll add a Vaadin progress bar, where we put the value equal to the stores uh, progress getter, like so. All right, so we'll save that. And hopefully, if things went well, we'll see that we now have the visual indicator here and the numeric value. So we can see that we've completed two out of three. And what more, this automatically updates as we're changing the state. So if we add new ones or complete existing ones, you can see that that automatically reflects the state. All right, so there you have it, uh, application state management using MobX in a lit element project. If you have any questions on state management, MobX, or have any suggestions for uh, future videos, let me know in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to the channel. We have new videos coming out every week. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.